I'd like to ask a question to Trisha Shetty. Ma'am, you launched, uh, she says, in the year 2015. And we believe it's a platform that aims to educate, rehabilitate, empower women to take direct action against uh, sexual assault in India. You know, in the last five years, have we been able to see any changes? Yes, because for us, change is two steps forward, five steps back, one step forward, two steps back. But for the families that we work with on ground, even that one step forward means everything to them. We had a case of a child less than 10 years of age who had been raped. And it took us over three years of running from police stations to courtrooms and helping the family on ground to later get a 10 year conviction. Now the law says these cases under the POCSO Act, which is prevention of uh, sexual abuse against children must be tried within a year. But this is in a metropolitan city like Mumbai, where we just don't have the infrastructure. So you can imagine how bad it is in other rural pockets. It took over three years to get a guilty sentence. But three years later, we did get a 10 year conviction. So that makes all the difference for the family, because I distinctly remember what the father told me. He said the person who raped my child had also sexually abused other kids, which I found out later. Had others reported him, my child would be safe. But now it ends with my child. He will not be in a position where he abuses other children. So it depends on the context, you know, uh, do things change? You don't do this work uh, to get medals, awards, to see assured wins. You do this work and you show up every single day because the most vulnerable and marginalized families show up. People from rich upper class societies don't show up to ask for justice. We still live under the burden of societal shame. Ghar ki baat, ghar pe rakho, log kya kahenge. It is the most poor who show up and fight for justice for all of us. So when they show up, we have a sense of obligation to also show up and fight. And you don't fight to win. You fight because you must. And just to put also things in context with the previous question you asked about sex education, how does it help? You know, if you live in Bombay, Mumbai, Delhi, you are very well living under the climate crisis uh, repercussions, right? The climate has been the way we've never seen it before. The two most cost effective solutions to fight the climate crisis is investing in young girls' education and sexual and reproductive health care rights, which is what we do as an organization. We go into schools, colleges, and teach all genders about consent, about their rights, how to take action, should they be subject to some sort of abuse. Because in most cases, over 97% of cases of abuse, the abuser is known to the person. When it comes to child sexual abuse, it's over 99% of cases the abuser is closely known to the person. It's not a stranger in a dark alley. So when abuse is happening within homes, who do you reach out to? Our families don't know how to report this. So this is why we need to strengthen infrastructure. And I'm really glad now governments, institutions, you know, press, media is talking about this in a way where our older generation never got to speak about these things. True. So I'm grateful for you, Amitabh, for you know, NDTV to have these conversations on mainstream channels, because only through more conversations will we change these cycles of oppression and abuse that we've been carrying on for generations. Sorry, it's okay. Uh, uh, Tushaji, I think you, you mentioned a lot of very important factors uh, on the question that I asked. But one of the very concerning factors was the time it took for justice to prevail. A lot of people who go through this trauma are uh, subjected to this time factor. And I'm, uh, well, I don't know if it's okay to mention that, but you know, in the Nirbhaya case, the mother was continuously being called to justify in court on what happened to her daughter. And for many years, every odd two or three months, she has to go to court and to confirm that her daughter was raped. And she said, 
The actual rape of my daughter is not so bad as me having to go into court and say, yes, my daughter was raped. It's the most humiliating uh, moment for any mother to be able to do that. And that is something that, you know, courts and justices need to be conscious of. Tapsi, before you, uh, uh, Trisha, before you respond, I want to introduce Tapsi as a new co-host, uh, a subject close to your heart. You've done movies on this. In fact, I have the two stars yeah, of the, uh, the very yeah. famous. And you know, the point that Trisha was making, uh, we need to be talking about this. So from a time where cinema used to glorify, I mean, this is the sad phase of Indian cinema also, where, uh, you know, sexual oppression was glorified. Hmm. Though obviously it was a message uh, showing the hmm. reality, but now uh, what is being highlighted is no means no. At least that's a start. Cinema yeah. is also yeah. playing its role. I believe you had a question for Trisha. Uh, hi Trisha. Um, I mean, I would love to hear what you to say regarding the question sir asked. Uh, just in addition to this, we keep uh, talking about what government and uh, society system should do about this particular problem. I want to ask you, what can we do? All of us, what can we do in our daily lives to play a role in keeping our women safe? What can women do actually for each other? Let's start with ourselves first. You know, uh, thank you for bringing up Asha Devi. I remember meeting her and uh, she had come to Bombay when uh, there was a gruesome rape that had happened in Unao and Katwa and she was getting back-to-back -back calls, you know, and at that point she was tired and she told her husband, Badri Nath, that I'm tired, you know, let me just take a break. And he said, no, agar meri awas sunke logon ko tasalli milti, to I would talk, but they need to listen to your voice. So you speak now, you will rest later. And I asked her later, don't you get tired? How are you able to fight so much? And she said, yes, subay uthti hu, sangarsh karti hu, raat ko thak jati hu, soti hu, vapas subay uthti hu, sangarsh karti hu. Kyunki mein jaanti hu. What is the price my daughter has had to pay and I have had to pay? So it's this deep sense of responsibility to fight for justice from people who have seen the worst of humanity and still showcase the best of their own humanity. So what do we do? I think have these conversations. First, as women, as gender non-conforming people own our truth and claim that, yes, this happened to me. And if someone listening, it makes them uncomfortable. You know, everyone loves to talk about gender equality. I'm so glad you are talking about the inequality because you cannot fight for equality without addressing inequality. But when we talk about these things, they say, Are, it makes me uncomfortable. So it's OK if you're uncomfortable, if it means we will fight for truth and for this to change, for this reality to change. So one, have these honest conversations and hold our own family, hold the men in our own circles to higher standard. Two, as myself, as a woman, I've had to unlearn a lot of problematic behaviors. Things I thought were okay to say, things I thought were okay to do. We need to unlearn these things. And three, mainly hold our elected leaders to account to do better by us. Hold our institutions accountable to provide us justice, to provide, to make sure we are safe, mm. to make sure that the women's helpline number works across India, to make sure that streets have street lights on it, to make sure that, you know, when you walk down the street, you actually feel safe. We all know what that look is, the tadna, we all know about it. To make sure where is our money going? Is it being invested? in the places to make sure our education actually provides kids with the kind of quality education you need that will help you survive in this world, right? So I think these three simple things uh, can do a lot. And if you have someone who reaches out to you and says they are being abused or they are not safe or they need help, don't ask them questions like, what did you do just before you got abused that may have justified you being abused? Ask, tell them you are sorry Ask them how you can help them, connect them to a therapist and counselor because mental health is so important for a survivor to get out of trauma and thrive. And beyond just justice, be there for them every day because they carry the trauma for a long time.
um, you know in addition to this something that i strongly feel that needs to be done is to make sure the girl child gets good right education right from the beginning True. because i think that is probably the root cause or a root solution rather to a lot of problems so they are aware of what they can ask True. for what they deserve yeah. and uh, being mindful of this uh, just extending the answer to this what i thought i should be doing rather than questioning and blaming a lot of people is to make sure i can help in the education of a uh, girl child mm. so i ended up adopting education uh, sponsoring education for girl children in specifically those areas where child trafficking is extremely high correct so i think this is one very so so to say easy way of making difference yeah. at your level yeah. just yeah. make sure you're imparting uh, you're helping uh, a girl child get educated Correct. imparting the right knowledge and education so she knows in the future what she can expect and not expect is it difficult yeah. because there's so much more to be done it's just the beginning it is just yeah. the beginning